Cena, Cena, what, what do you what do you have to say? Hello. Hi, What's Cena. Up? Yes. Very quickly, what uh, would you like to say? First, first of all, I'm sorry, we don't have credit card. I cannot become your Patreon. That's okay. You don't have to. Second, um, in Pakistan, in India, in Indian Peninsula, people are becoming more religious Muslims or less re religious. In your point, in your view. Is your am I am I hearing? Are you, are you, is that a Persian Iranian accent? Yes, I'm Iranian. Yes, not no, a Persian. I'm not a Persian, but I'm Iranian. What's the difference? Because a lot of people are like, um, is, is there a thing with Iranian and Persian? Because I, I, I mean, I know Persian Empire and, and the Persian history. Look, um, I tell yeah. you, in Iran, Iran, it means land of Aryans. Okay, right. They were different Aryan tribes, different Aryan people. One of them are Persians. Mm. So in nowadays Iran, 55% are per Persian or Persian, 20% 20, 20 are Azerbaijanis, around 10% are Kurds, 5% are minorities, they're Armenian, they're Georgian, they're Baluchi, they're also some Arabs. I'm right. Iranian, but I'm not, I'm not a Persian. I'm Azerbaijan Iranian. Right. Um, so your question, uh, I'm Indian and Pakistani becoming more religious. I think Indians, Hindus are definitely becoming more Hindus, more radical. Or they, I would probably say those people always ex existed, but the clashes are becoming more prominent for some reason now because the world is getting really, really more polarized. Uh, in Pakistan, they're definitely getting more religious, but then there is something coming out of Pakistan as well. There's um, where, where some people are becoming atheists as well. So we are seeing the rise of atheism in Muslim world like we've never seen before either. So that's happening as well. So again, it goes back to polarization. What the Pew survey came out recently on India, um, that showed some very interesting points. I think I made a detailed video on that as well, um, where we went through a lot of individual beliefs of people uh, of Muslims as well, uh, for example, um, I, I remember it's 27 or somewhere around 30% of Muslims in India, Indian Muslims don't believe in heaven and hell, which is like one of the core tenets of Islamic belief. So you're like, oh. whoa, okay, how, how does that work out? Um, it, more or less they were same, but I think it was slightly better in Muslims case. Um, the Muslims were um, more likely to give Hindu uh, live in a Hindu neighborhood than the other way around. So, but they were more or less the same. So some parts were like, I would have thought Pakistani Muslims would never do that. Um, so it's difficult to say, but overall trend that we look at, people might be getting more religious within their religions, but the amount, the rate of dissent that we're seeing everywhere, especially your Iran as well. Um, it's, it's fucked up in Iran. It's fucked up. It's really bad. But we saw, we, did you see the study though? The Utrecht yeah, University, the Dutch University. Yeah, I know. You know, we are becoming ex-Muslim in a really, really bad way. There was a woman telling another girl, okay, mind your hijab, do your hijab, because she wasn't properly having hijab. She turned back instantly and said, read them to Islam. It means kind of fuck Islam. <laughs> and that yeah. went viral in Iran. In Iranian Twitter, it it was the first hashtag for 72 hours. Oh, after that, president came and said, no, our use of Islam and stuff like that. And, and they put um, Prophet Muhammad movies in the TV. After that, uh, fuck Muhammad uh, hashtag became the first trend in Iran, in Iranian Twitter. What's happening in Iran is really bad. Pe we are becoming ex-Muslim. You, you barely can find people who pray or believe in Islam, but the way that we are becoming is really bad. I hope that does not happen in your country. It, there's a lot of hatred going on in my country, which is really bad. Well, yes, looks difficult to say because um, I um, Pakistan is a totally different beast, and Iran and Pakistan. I don't know the the inner workings of what's been happening in Iran. I think I'm in Navabi you know, on, to his English audience doesn't usually talk as much about it, but I think it's probably when he puts his Iranian hat on, 
and when he speaks in Persian, then he's probably more detailed, but we can't understand that. But in case of Pakistan, for example, Pakistan is totally different from Iran in a way. Pakistan has had this proto-democracy, a kind of a democracy. The, it's not a theocratic state, with some little sprinkles of theology here and there, Sharia law, bits and pieces here and there, but not really Sharia, Sharia. No, people, Women can wear jeans and modern clothes, but they are frowned upon, and over the years it's gotten worse. Um, Iran, on the other hand, has always had, uh, at, at least since the Iranian revolution, they've had this Islamic theocracy and people under it get, were getting sick, sick and yeah. tired of this theology being shoved yeah. down the throat. In Pakistan, they never had, they never tasted real Islam. They never did. Yeah, you can watch Bollywood movies, you can dance, you can not eat pork or drink alcohol, but you can do pretty much every other nasty thing. They, they, they see the dirty dances according to their standard, all of that. We because do it here something... too, but illegally, completely. Yeah, illegally. no, but it, have... no, but Pakistan, it's not illegal. It's just everyone knows it, and oh. it's not illegal either. It's not illegal. It's not against yeah. the law. So then, so they were getting best of both worlds, and then at the same time, they were thinking that religion is the ultimate symbol of piety, and religion is the way forward. So, uh, so that's why the the romanticism with religion increased over time, and now it's it's on the it's on the verge of a verge of a breakdown, I would say. So if Pakistan becomes Iran, meaning they get an Islamic revolution, then it will take them 30 years to really get sick of Islam. That might, And that seems like an unfortunate, vicious cycle of religiosity. But I hope your country, I'm very hopeful that your, this Islamic uh, government in Iran would be overthrown. And then uh, what I see from everyone or hear or read or whatever, Iranian I, I don't know the other bits that you're talking about, but Iranian, if they leave Islam first, that's the first step. And then, yes, there's other yeah. Persian and all that kind of dogma around as well. That those are they seem less lesser of the two evils. First evil is Islamic government, it, Islamic government that we have in Iran. You know, yeah. In our high school, there were 524 students only i don't know 15 or 17 people used to go pray and we used to call the head of the praying committee we used to call him brother taliban it, this kind of atmosphere exists but the thing is in iran we have a very old nationalism we have a very old sense of the concept of iran exists our country didn't uh, form based on islam okay but in case of Pakistan, Islam is the is the reason that Pakistan exists. We kind of abandon, we have abandoned idea of Islam, and we are we are clinging to idea of Iran, which existed long, long before uh, Islam. Do you have anything like that? So when people no, we don't. leave Islam, we, in, yeah, in we Pakistan don't. they don't face. A crisis of identity, identity crisis. Do you have anything like that? Or can you make something like that, like the idea of Iran that we have? Yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an argument that is brought up time and time again by Indians that Islam was formed on the basis of Islam uh, and, but, sorry, Pakistan was, uh, was created on the basis of Islam and they wanted, um, if you take away Islam, then there's no reason for Pakistan to exist. There would be identity crisis, which is the reason why sometimes we become Turks, Pakistanis. <laughs> they become Turks. Yes, we are Turks. Sometimes we become Arabs, and um, you know, and some, and we never become Indians, who we actually are. So there is an identity crisis. But I look at it differently. I see that you don't need in the modern world. You don't need ancient roots to exist or to live in the future to, to move in move towards the future. You can say this was the reason why we were created but countries evolve like the most common example i give for the united states is the united states was formed on the ideas of liberty and freedom yet at the same time they, they were have western blacks. identity it's different america was based on uh, western identity it's yes different. obviously there are differences but by the point that i'm making the point i am making you, you but we can say well, we're indians as well but we're east indians or so west indians <laughs> if you want to go that way you can i know you, we we, we hang, hear me out. I, I don't think you understand my point. Yes, we can yes. go that way as well. My, my point is the so-called identity that people get caught up on 
It's not necessary yeah. in the 21st century. It's not needed. A lot of people say, well, Egyptians can go back to the Egyptian roots of the pharaohs, or the Cleopatras. And then, you, no, you don't need that. If you if you ditch Islam, you don't have to go back to anything. Same thing with uh, Ir Iranians as well. They say that, oh, we're going to go back to our Persian roots. No, you don't need Persian roots. You can be 21st century modern human beings, part of the global village where all we share UN's human rights charter. We, we like share. I told global them, I'm not a Persian. I'm not, no, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. I'm saying that's the argument that the people make, that we need some sort of identity to cling on in order to keep the social cohesion or the national integrity. I'm saying we don't need that anymore. So even though Pakistan yeah. was created and the Pakistan can evolve into something else, evolve into a modern republic, just like that. And the, the example that I'm giving was the United States, the United States was formed on the ideals of freedom and and, and, and um, um, liberty. But at the same time, the founding fathers who were promoting these ideals, they, were, they totally ignored the African-Americans that they were still doing slave trades. All the founding fathers had, had their slaves. But 70 yes. years later, 70 years later, they had to abolish that slavery. So they evolved. They evolved. Yes, you can say that they're still white people. But now 2050, they're going to be Latinos and non-whites are going to be in majority in the United States. Again, countries evolve. You don't need a particular set of identity to exist. European countries, the, the so-called Western values that we talk about, they were totally alien to the same people living in the West yes. 300 years ago. Pre-industrial revolution or pre-modernism, uh, pre-scientific revolution, they evolved. So why can't Pakistanis evolve and say, yes, we were created on the basis of Islam, but you know what? We can move to a secular type of government. Yes, we are kind of Indians, which we are. We spe speak the same language as Indians. We have we watch their movies. We understand that. We understand the jokes. We have the similar food. We have similar food. But, with, but without dissolving borders and becoming the same country, we can do that. So I, I personally have never bought into the argument of the identity, so to speak. Uh, last word. I know, but, you know, how can I say? Um, when I say identity, um, I mean that ideas that people can form their new way, that can make their new way based on them. Iran or Western values or stuff like can somehow provide this. Pakistan, honestly, I know you're Pakistani, but kind of doesn't have it. And I really am sorry to say this. You turned Afghanistan into shithole. That's why I'm really concerned about Pakistan. In Sistan, Baluchistan, province of Iran, a lot of people which has border with Pakistan. A, a lot of people, can, they, they complain about Pakistanis. That's why I really am worried about Pakistan. But what, yeah, but, no, yeah, but what, what I'm saying is that, yeah, because the current setup of Pakistan is, it does revolve around religiosity and it's, uh, you know, so, so what we're saying, you need to understand what we're saying. We want Pakistan to move forward and evolve and get out of this religion business and theocracy, this proto-democracy and half theology, half the theocracy and half democracy business. We're asking, we're, we're trying pa to secularize Pakistan. Once this turning of Pakistan into a shithole, that problem would be gone uh, or influencing other countries and you know having all these problems that Pakistan has, they'll be gone if Pakistan evolves into a secular modern secular yeah. republic that can happen without looking into our past identities or the reasons what pakistan was formed into that that's all i'm saying i agree with most of the part that you said but we don't need ancient identities we we, we, we don't need them we, we can go past them maybe and we I'll have to completely different countries you know my family served in the iranian army for 500 years maybe i cannot ignore that but maybe good luck yeah, but maybe. don't become like us there is too much hatred in Iran. You have no idea. Yeah, Muslims, I, I, I don't claim maybe to know. Yeah, look, I don't, I don't claim to know what's going on in Iran. I, I don't claim to know what's going on in Iran. Yes. But what I do, what, but what I do think, as I said, as far as Pakistan is concerned, I see that it's a very logically strong point that countries evolve, and despite of what Pakistan was founded on, it can evolve too. Yes, that's all I'm saying. All right, thank yes. you, sir. thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. In, in Iran, just one point and I leave. Thank you for your time. In Iran, maybe the government is on the hands of the Muslims, but on society, Muslims are on the minority and they're extremely hated. They, they cannot speak their mind. People call them terrorists. People call them stupid. We could
stuff like this. They're too much hatred. Don't evolve like us. <laughs> but yes, thank no. you for your time. No, no, thank you. Thank you very much. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal.